Magandang umaga. Buksan natin ang ating mga banal na kasulatan doon sa ating uh, text, Romans 13, 11-12. Romans 13, 11-12. In fact, uh, oh yeah, sige, yun na lang 11-12. And then, dagdagan natin ng isa pa, yung reference ko ng Monday. Do you remember that? Ilan ang nandito ng lunes, ng gabi? Oh, maraming wala. Oo. Anyway, Romans 13, 11, and 12 says, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Mga kapatid, panahon na raw para gumising na tayo. Kaya mga inaantok pa dyan, medyo sampal-sampalin nyo na yung mga sarili nyo, no? Okay. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. And then in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I used this last Monday para sa ating mensahe. Verses 4 to 8. Ang sabi ni Apostol Pablo rito ay, But ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober, for they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that are drunken are drunken in the night. Let us who of, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. I'm going to add two more verses to that. And this time, let us go to the book of Revelation. <coughs> Revelation chapter 1 and verse 3. Revelation 1.3. Obserbahan natin, ano? Yung unang binasa nating talata, itong teksto na ito, ay sulat ni Apostol Pablo sa mga mana ng palataya o mga churches sa Rome. Am I correct? Amen. Okay, mag-amen kayo. Oo. <laughs> Secondly, yung binasa natin sa 1 Thessalonians naman ay sulat ni Apostol Pablo doon din naman sa Ecclesia sa <laughs> sa, <laughs> sa Thessalonica. Ngayon, itong revelation mga kapatid ay sulat ng Panginoon sa pamamagitan ni Juan. Kanino? Sa seven churches. Sa Asia Minor. Okay? Oo. Okay? So, baka akala nyo pagdating doon sa Revelation 22, hindi na yon. But the whole Revelation, mga kapatid, ay sulat sa mga churches. <laughs> Oo nga, no? Ba't nagkaganoon? Ba't puti it? May daya ito eh. Okay. <laughs> Revelation 1.3 Ang sabi sa Revelation 1.3 Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Tama ba? Kita niya, no? Obserbahan niyo. That's the first chapter. And now go to the last chapter of Revelation. Chapter 22. Hanggang dulo na ito, mga kapatid, ha? Nang, ano, New Testament. Revelation 22 and verse 10. And here, ang sabi dito, And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Kaya alam nyo, tamang-tama at napakaganda ng temang ito. The time is at hand. It is about time, mga kapatid. Okay, manalangin tayo. Dakilang Diyos, pagpalain mo po ang mensaheng ito na sa huling bahagi, Panginoon, ng mensaheng ito ay pagpalain niyo po kami. Maraming salamat sa mga naririto, sa punang mga kapasturan, mga represented ng mga churches, Panginoon. At dakilang Diyos, turuan niyo po kami sa ngayon sa iyong salita, palaguin niyo kami at maging Maging aware kami, Panginoon, ng kapanahunan. Sa pangalan po ni Kristo Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. 
Yung meron sumusulat dyan, meron dyan table. Oo, dito sa armrest. Kung may table dyan, kunin nyo lang para maging madali sa inyo. Okay? Pwede ba nilang i-uwi yun? Yung table? Mga <laughs> baknas-baknasin na. Okay. Uh, dumating na ba yung mga taga Lighthouse? Nariyan na. Okay. Uh, tol, kinansil ko yung ano, service namin doon. Magpakailanman. Dito na kami. Hindi. <laughs> Kinansel ko yung prayer service at atalon para narito yung mga taga Lighthouse. Kaya ngayon ay back-to-back -back din ang ating uh, uh, web streaming sa ating website at sa Facebook Live. Okay. Ah, okay. Ang international dito ay uh, represented ng leader ngayon nila at coordinator na taga Lighthouse din. Pero ito ay si Brother Jedel Agro. Ayan. Ayan, ang aming kapatid na nawawala. Si... Ano yung si, si Brother Jidel? Kamukha ni Pastor Hernes, no? <laughs> <laughs> Lahat ng lighthouse tumayo. Lahat ng lighthouse tumayo. Ayan. <laughs> hindi, la, hindi, hindi. Yung ano, international pala, international tumayo. Lahat ng international tumayo. Ayan. O yan, no? marami. Oh. Dinahanap po kanina. Eh. Andyan, no? Ayan, no? Ayan. Okay, thank you. Please be seated. At least press. Alam niyo, meron kaming, ano eh, meron kaming, anong tawag nito? Yung blood compact ng mga magkakapatid, nagkakaganyan kami. Metropolitan International Lighthouse Endeavors, Mile. Okay. <clears throat> It is time. Dalawa mensahe ko ngayon, ngayong gabing ito, babalikan ko yung aking mensahe ng lunes para for the sake of those who were not, reviewin natin. Amen? Let's just go through it. Sapagkat uh, eh, ayokong, gusto ko yung pagkakataon na ang salita ng Diyos mismo ang magbigay sa atin ng ating realization kung ano na ang oras na meron tayo. Amen? Nabalikan natin yung 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. At nagsimula tayo doon sa verse 5 hanggang verse 14 ito. No? A review of the first message last uh, Monday. Ang sabi doon sa verse 6 ay ito. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that are drunken, that be drunken, are drunken in the night. Now, tayo'y ginigising dito upang wag na tayo ikang nasa nakahimlay. Okay? Ang, ang tulog, mga kapatid, ay usual natin ginagawa sa kama. Kaya ang aking punto rito, nung lunes ay ito. It is time to get out of bed, put on the work clothes, and do the work. Okay? It is time to get out of bed. Siyempre, karaniwan, kapag tayo ay nasa kama, natutulog tayo, nahihimlay, tayo ay nakabihis pantulog. Amen. <clears throat> Pagising natin, no? aalisin natin yung ating kabihisang pantulog, papalitan natin ang kabihisang pangtrabaho. At kapag nagsuot tayo niyan ay we go and do the work. Amen? Simply, ang sinasabi sa atin dito, you get out of your bed, change your clothes, and do the work. Now, uh, inampasize ko nung lunes na we, re we should realize that when we do the work, we do the work of the Lord. There should be there a good definition of what the work of the Lord is. Hindi po lahat ng kwentuhan at ginagawa ng mga kapastoran ay work of the Lord. Hindi porke pastor ka, you are in the work of the Lord. Sapagkat hindi lahat ng empleyado nagtatrabaho. At hindi lahat ng manager ay nasa trabaho. Amen. I mean, we need to be serious about the work and we need to be in the confines of the work. And that's how serious it should be. Amen. Aha. So, we should have that thing. Iba ang natutulog, iba ang nasa kamang gising at gising na nakabihis na at nagtatrabaho. Okay? And of course, nariyon din naman yung prinsipyo na kapag nagtatrabaho ka, magtrabaho ka na ang suot mo ay eh, hindi suot ng pangtulog. Oh, maraming sense na pwede nating i-apply diyan. Amen? When we do the work of God, we do the work of the Lord. And my reminder, 
It is in the work of the Lord that we should be steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding. So, tayo mga kapasturan at lahat ng leaders ng ating mga churches, we should well understand kung anong ibig sabihin ng the work of the Lord. If you do something, let us define, are we doing the work of the Lord? Is this the work of the Lord? Is this part of the work of the Lord? Baka nagkikwentong kutsero lang tayo, mga kapatid. Amen. Okay. Next verses. But let us, verse 8, of who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet of salvation, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. We are going through the first Thessalonians chapter 5. And in this set of verses, itong sinayit kong ito, ang ibig kong, ang lagay, nilagay kong punto ay ito, it is time to be equipped for the work of the Lord. Marami po tayong equipping. Marami tayong abilidad. Marami tayong capability. But it does not necessarily mean na kung ano ang ating capability that is used in the work of the Lord. Hindi lahat ng magaling mag-English ay magaling mag-preach. At hindi lahat ng magaling umawit ay umaawit para sa Panginoon. Hindi lahat ng magaling mag-instrumento ay nagag... You know, meron, meron akong na... Eh, pastor, ako, magaling ako mag-sales. Siguro magaling ako mag-preach. Okay? Iba, mga kapatid, ang abilidad at ang skill sa gift. Sa gawain ng Panginoon, ang ginagamit lang niyang eksklusibo para sa Kanya ay gifts. Gifts. Kung babasahin natin ang kabuuan ng 1 Corinthians chapter 11 to 14 o kaya naman ay Romans chapter 12 ay makikita doon ang tungkol sa mga gifts. Ako ay meron akong series ng mga mensahe tungkol sa gift-based ministry. Certain skills and abilities do not mean that they are gifts. When does an ability or a skill turn into a gift? Have you ever thought about that? Ha? Huh? Minsan, nakakarinig ako ng mga, Uy, pastor, magaling ito sa music. Okay. Patugtugan na natin sa church. Okay? Kaya ayun, wala namang sense ng spirituality, wala namang sense ng kung ano ang para sa Panginoon, ayun, pinatugtog. Okay? Kaya tuloy, lahat ng kumikilo sa church ay eh, para mga unsaved. Are you listening? O kinakailangan po nating bigyan ng distinction yan. Hindi lahat ng skills ay talagang gifts. Hindi lahat ng mga natural abilities ay talagang gifts. So question, when does a skill turn into a gift? Anong sabi ng Romans 12, chapter 1? Present your bodies. Sa aming sa, light, sa Lighthouse, meron kaming gift-based ministry. At ang aking sabi ito, kung, ang, kung bawat isa ay may kakayanan at may abilidad at may skill, that skill can be turned into a gift. What should be done? Then, give yourselves to the work of the Lord. You do not necessarily need to be a preacher. But, give these abilities and skills to God. Kaya alam nyo, bahagi ng ministry namin, lahat ng may kakayanan and turn them into gifts. Pati mga nagluluto, nasa gift-based ministry. Pati yung mga nagme-make up. Sipin nyo, nagme-make up. Akala natin hindi bahagi ng ministry yun. Meron kaming television show. Okay? Meron kaming kids show. Yung kids show, yung mga bata, kinakailangan make up on. You know, we do not need to outsource all these things. Ang ginagawa namin, okay, lahat ng merong ganito, you give yourselves to the Lord and be serious about it. Anong alam mo? Ang alam ko lang po, kumain. Maghanap ka ng ibang pwedeng gawin. <laughs> okay. And give it to the Lord. Lord, through this ability, I'm giving this to you. I, I do not, I do, hindi ko na kinakailangan ang swelduhan yan. No need to. They're given to God. Iaayos mo na lang kung kailan sila kikilos. Amen. That is one way to get everybody working. Eh bakit ba? 
ang utak natin ay eh, ganito na lang palagi. Bakit ang gawain ng Panginoon? Lagi na lang si pastor, si misis pastor, si anak ni pastor. Why? Bakit na lang si preacher at si Sunday school teacher? Paano yung mga iba? Ay hindi ho kami bahagi, member lang po ako rito. Come on, I do not believe in mere membership and attendance. When you have been baptized, you're part of the body. And when you're part of the body, kasama kang kikilos. I mean, that is what equipping is. We need to learn how to be equipped for the work of the Lord. If we do church work, if we do church work, and when you go back, pastors, to your churches, equip everyone to get them involved. Amen. Amen. Okay. Bakit lang ba ang nag-glorify? Ang nag-glorify na lang palagi yung nasa choir. Are they the only ones who can serve? Okay, number three. Verse 11 of 1 Thessalonians 5. We're reviewing this. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also ye do. It is time to be strong and be strong for others. Listen, we do not intend simply just to be strong and be strong for ourselves. If you cannot be strong for others, your strength is nothing. Amen. Kung ang aking kalakasan ay para sa akin at akin lamang, sayang na kalakasan yan. Pero kung ang aking kalakasan no, ay magtataas at makatutulong sa iba, abi ibang klaseng kalakasan yun mga kapatid. Tama? Okay. Kung ang aking lakas no, ay abilidad lang para isusta na yung sarili ko, abay mga kapatid, Paano ako makakaroon, bubuhay ng, how can I sustain my family? So every father, all parents should be strong, not just for themselves, but for their children. And pastors for that matter, must be strong beyond ourselves. Even beyond our families. Come on now. E kung palagi nilang, ang, ang kina, eh bay, mga kapatid, kung hindi tayo makagraduate, na tayo na lang palagi ang umaasa, paano makakaasa? Pa, paano natin mabibigyan ng asa yung ating mga miyembro? Are you listening? Amen. Amen. Alam niyo, e- ewan ko, ewan ko sa kapatid ko, no? But I should be stronger than my leaders. I should show myself stronger than my strongest member. If I cannot, eh, siya na lang magpastor. My family should be stronger than the strongest family. Because I'm a pastor. But if I cannot do that, something is wrong, then find out how we can be made stronger. Because Evidently, if we will edify others, we cannot edify others if we are not strong for them. Verse 12, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. It is time to submit and to obey. It is time. You know, we may be pastors. Ka, alam nyo, kami magkakapatid, I, I say this, matandang matanda siya compared sa akin. Sa edad. Oh. Siyempre, nandito ako ngayon. Hindi eh. siya makakadistract, nagpe-preach ako eh. And anyway, ito po mga kapatid. No? Alam nyo, wala na, wala na kaming tatay. Eh. Sinong pupuntahan ko for some guidance also in my leadership. Siya rin eh. Alam nga naman, pumunta ako sa mga miyembro ko. Alam mo, anong gagawin ko rito? Anong hirap magpastor? Di ba? Di ba? Abay, huwag kang magpakita na akala mo hindi mo kailangan ng mentor sa buhay mo. We all need. However old we have been in the ministry. However, you know, magaling tayo mag-isip. We need mentors. We need pastors also for us. Amen? It is time to be able to submit and to obey. Alam niyo, minsan itong independent 
independence, independent principle na ating pinagmamalaki, sobra eh. Sumobra, naging isolated tayo. Sumobra, naging mayabang tayo. Sumobra na parang wala. Pa- Hello? Alam niyo ito mga kapatid, minsan yung naatake natin yung uh, mga ano, mga evangelical. Eh talaga naman minsan dapat atakehin. Pero alam niyo marami akong kausap ng mga evangelical pastors. Ha? Malayong malayo ang usapan natin. In terms of their seriousness. Oh, makipag-usap kayo sa mga ilan. Eh wag lang yung mga nininiwala sa mga extra biblical revelation na ganyan ganyan ko ano. Pero may mga sense yung mga iba. Totoo yan, mga kapatid. Eh kinakailangan, alam nyo, we, we also need to learn these things. Amen. Oh. Minsan nga, nagko-comment na lang ako, para kang mas Bible Baptist pa kaysa sa amin eh. Anyway, it is time to show submission and obedience. Verse 13. Look at this. And esteem them, pakuluin daw sila, and esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. And you look at what follows. And be at peace among yourselves. It is time not just to be at peace because what this actually means is this. It is time to be able to work with others. It is time to be able to work with others. I think that should be a very good quality of leaders. Being able to work with others. When you can just work by yourself, malaki talo mo, kapatid. Aha, malaki talo mo. Some people think na masyado kaming autocratic sa aming leadership. Mga kapatid, Alam niyo po, kahit ako magdedesisyon, I call on my pastor's men. Especially when it comes to sensitive na mga decisions. I have pastor's men. I have nine pastor's men in Lighthouse. They are not full-time. They are leaders. I mean, they are, bis- they are people in business. Okay? They are family, you know, men. And then, pagkatapos ng pastor's men, mga hindi mga pastors yun, ha? And I have sentinels. These are the leaders that I have doon sa mga districts namin. More or less, I have two or three sentinels in every district. And then bukod dyan, we have fellowship leaders. Okay? We have tiered sets of leaders. We should be able to work with others. Amen? I do not believe as a, that a pastor should be a hermit. Siguro ang naging naging Bible ang mag, naging teacher mo sa Bible school si Diotrepes. Eh kayo kayo na lang. Okay, pero yun ang ibig sabihin niyan. Be at peace among yourselves, be able to work with others. Verse 14. Now we exhort you brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men. What time is this? It is time to be responsible, disciplined, and to bring benefit both to the work of the Lord and to the community. I have one challenge for you. And I see this here in Metropolitan. And we are serious on this sa Lighthouse, sa Tatalon. Alam niyo po, marami kaming ginagawa sa community sa Tatalon. In fact, pwede kong sabihin siguro, we even do more than the barangay. Every March and September, we have two medical missions with an average of 2,100 ano, na mga patients. 2,100. So, March and September, Bukod dyan, no, meron pa kaming mga iba't ibang. Yung medical mission po namin ay ibinababa namin sa lahat ng lighthouse because we have an alert team. All lighthouse emergency and response team. Okay? So they extend this medical mission sa lahat ng mga lighthouses. 
Okay? Ang aming mga doktor, ang aming mga pharmacists, ang aming mga nurses, they are organized to do that. Meron kaming bloodletting every quarter. Once every quarter, meron kaming bloodletting. Linggo ng hapon, ginagawa yan. Kaya alam nyo, kung nangangailangan ng dugo, we can help. Meron kaming blood bank. Aha. Nakakahiya naman kung halimbawa na aksidente na kailangan ng dugo, wala makatulong ng dugo. So nakakatulong po kami. Okay. And then itong October and until until December, we will start a program para sa mga senior citizens sa barangay. 1,000 of them. Some years back, we did a three-month feeding program sa mga malnourished children sa Tatalon. Isang barangay. No? Malnourished children. Pinakain namin yan ng tatlong buwan. Kasama mga nanay nila. At the end of the three months, winay ang bawat bata. You know, mga malnourished. Mga nakarehistro yan bilang malnourished. Tiningnan kung sila ay medyo umangat na. Meron mga hindi. Yung mga hindi, inimbestigahan kung bakit hindi man lang umangat. Yung pala, may mga sakit sa pamilya. Ibig sabihin, ang, mas, ang sakit ay hindi lang sa bata, kundi sa pamilya. So, in-extend namin ang programa sa mga pamilya. Anong problema? Walang trabaho. Then we did livelihood programs for them. Kahit ngayon, araw-araw, tatlongpong mga tao ang nagla-livelihood program sa Tatalon, sa Lighthouse, tinuturuan sila ng cosmetics. Mag-ayos, di ba? Eh, marami kaming puneraryo dun eh. eh. Parang natutulog lang ay itsura. Amen. Tinuruan namin sila ng therapist. Yung, pag, yung massage therapy, tinuruan namin sila ng maraming mga bagay na pagkakakitaan. Meron kaming paanakan. 157 ng bata. Sanggol ang pinanganak doon hanggang ngayon. Meron kaming generic pharmacy. Lahat po yan ay para sa community. Why? Because we take serious business to minister to our community. Nung araw, nung araw ay yabang-yabang namin. Pupunta kami sa loob ng tatalon, ng lighthouse. Eh, dala namin yung Bible. Wala man na nakakilala sa amin. Pe, pwede ba yun mag... Hindi, come on, hindi pe, pwede yun eh. Sabi ko sa mga taga, taga the lighthouse, hindi pe, pwede mangyari yan. Now, let us better our existence here. Oh, di ba? Nakasimangot pa. Tapos, ang, you know, tapos iiwas ng tingin. Hindi mo pwedeng gawin sa tatalon yan. Hindi ka nga pwedeng pumasok na nakakochi ka doon tapos bubusi-busina ka. Nako, paplating ka. Nanakawin yung side mirror mo. Sinasabi ni Pastor Benny sa akin, Tol, meron akong security ngayon. Okay? Kaya kailangan meron ka ng, ano, meron ka ng unip- di- uniformado na mga security guards. Sabi ko, Tol, hindi pwede sa tatalon yan. Bakit? Tatalon yun eh. Ibang klase isayak ng tao doon. Ang mga security namin puro undercover. Sino security namin? Pumunta kayo doon kahit anong gabi. Mga barangay tanod nasa labas ng building namin nag, nagbabantay. You know, Pumunta yung, buti nag ano yung eleksyon eh. Yung eleksyon, yung barangay eleksyon. May pumunta sa akin dalawa, gustong tumakbo. Oh, eh Bishop, gusto po na po namin hindi ng blessing. Takbo po kami yung barangay na ano. Eh, kaya nausap ko. Sabi ko, ano ba programa mo? Baka mas marahe pa akong ginagawa sa'yo. <laughs> eh, yun nga po eh. Nasunugan. Nasunugan doon, 150 families. Anong ginawa namin? Yung 150 families, kinupkop namin ng isang linggo. Naroon sa aming basketball court, 150 families sa sulugan. Pinapakain. Pagkatapos ng mga ilang buwan, yung bill ng tubig dumating 55,000 pesos. But hey, we need to bless the community. We need to be there. That's the challenge, mga kapatid. Kung hindi natin maibababa sa ating mga komunidad, ang ating ministry, eh saan ba tayo dapat magliwanag? Nagmamalaki tayo, maraming, ina, maraming tayong inaabot, ang layo ng inaabot natin. We send missionaries all uh, hanggang sa uttermost part of the world. Yung kapitbahay natin, hindi tayo kalala, hindi nila alam kung ano ang mensahe natin. It is time 
Nabalansihin natin ang ating, sabi nga namin, ito si Pastor Bong, no, memorize niya ito, the light that shines the farthest, titingin ko yan, shines brightest at home. Maraming tatanong sa akin, Pastor, kailan po ang inyong conference? Bakit? Gusto namin pumunta. Huwag ka na mag-antay ng conference. Kung gusto mong pumunta, pumunta ka. In the most ordinary day, tingnan mo kung anong nangyayari sa amin. I challenge you. Huwag, huwag ka na magpaalam sa akin. Pumunta ka na lang doon. Sabi mo, Pastor ka, you're a part of Bible mode. You, you have been here. Pumunta ka doon. Tingnan mo kung anong nangyayari araw-araw. Ba't pa ako maghahanda para, punta, para pumunta ka? Oh. Okay. It is time for us to do that. Amen. Go beyond ourselves. Okay. Verse 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. You know. Okay. Next. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. It is time to be prayerful, trustful, and thankful. Quench not the spirit. It is time to be yielded to the spirit. Despise not prophesying. It is time to be attentive to the word. Mga kapatid, let us not just simply study methods and strategies. Let us study the word. Ako, hanga ako sa ginagawa ng Metropolitan. Pero alam niyo ginagawa ko? I, 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 this is my personal commitment as a preacher. Inaalam ko kung paano nilang ginawa ang ministry nung araw. Lahat ng churches mentioned in the New Testament. How were they able to do it? What qualities did they have? How did they preach? How did they respond to trials, to persecutions? Because they are our models. They are. Amen? Amen. Hindi nagkukulang ang New Testament and all the churches na nakalagay dyan kung ano ang mga maaari nating kunin as example sa mga ginawa nila. They are our patterns. Alam mo, I was talking to a pastor. Abi, kung atakihin ng Laodicea, ganun na lang, na para bang mas may sa Laodicea? Come on. Minsan nakakasala tayo sa Laodicean Church eh. Mabuti pa yung Laodicean, sinulatan ng Panginoon eh, ikaw. Inatake ng gusto yung Laodicea. Eka, mabuti pa yung Laodicea, sinulatan ng Panginoon. At dahil sinulatan ng Panginoon yan, church pa din yan. And you are no better church than Laodicea. Eh mabuti pa, tinan natin kung anong matututunan natin doon. Kaysa atakihin natin. Amen. Okay. Next. Prove all things. Verse 21. Hold fast that which is good. It is time to apply what we have been taught. Now, that's my message last Monday. My message tonight. First verse. You observe, this is full of verses. And this is just full of points. According to these verses. First Peter chapter 4, verse 17. It is time, this final message. The time is at hand. 1 Peter 4.17 Anong sabi ni Peter? For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end of them be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? You know what? You have to admit, mahirap intindihin to. Amen. Pero ang premise ng pinag-uusapan dito ni Peter is this. Sometimes kasi we suffer. There are two reasons why we suffer. First, we suffer because of the wrong things we do. Correct. And then we suffer because we do the work of Christ. Correct. So there are two kinds of sufferings. At ang sinasabi ni Peter dito, it is time for us, no, na hindi tayo nagsasuffer for the things na kasalanan din natin. Tama. Angal ka ng angal. Alam mo, pastor, may sakit ako, sakit mo, diabetes. Yan, takaw mo kumain ng kanin eh. Tapos aangal-angal ka, may sakit ka. 
Di ba? Hello? Kanin. Sugar yun eh. Oh, nakakita akong pastor. No? Nagkape kami. Ako, ano lang, cream lang. Ba sa kanya, tatlong teaspoon ng asukal. Grabe ka. Pag ganyan. Alam mo, pastor, hindi ka pa yan pag walang ganito. <laughs> Bahala ka sa buhay mo, kao. <laughs> Susunod niya, may diabetes ka na. Kahit anuman, we suffer because of our wrong, own wrongdoings. And that's not just doctrinal. I mean, that's not just physical. That's even doctrinal. Amen. At ang sinasabi ni Peter dito, it is time that we be corrected in our respective churches. Judgment must begin at the house of God. Come on. Let me use an example. Tayo mga families tayo, mga parents tayo, di ba? There are just some you know, some days na napakahirap turuan ng mga bata. Correct. Parents. Na kahit na ano, ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. Kaya anong tendency ng mga parents? Pastor, ikaw na nga bahala sa anak ko. Amen. Why? Sapagkat naroon yung notion that an ecclesia is corrective. If our churches cannot be corrective, what sense mayroon tayo? It is time that our churches be corrective. Merong maling notion sa marami mga churches. Yung bang, alam mo, kasi baka mawala eh. Baka lumayas. Pero, anong gagawin natin? Do we dilute and do we just make everything substandard at alisin natin ang corrective measures sa ating mga churches? Amen? Yun ang ibig sabihin ng judgment must begin at the house of God. You see, we cannot preach right if we cannot cite the wrong. Hello? And that is not just true sa mga kung ano-anong nakaugulian. We, we go beyond traditions. We go beyond customs. Yun lang halimbawa. Aminin nyo na. Sometimes meron kayong mga miyembro. Kami, marami kami. Mga Chinese. Meron ba kayong mga miyembro sa mga Chinese? Pag pumunta kayo sa bahay at binisit ninyo, meron pa mga pungsoy-pungsoy doon sa bahay. Mga member na ng church yon. Okay? Meron pa ko ano na nakasabit na ganyan. <laughs> oh, nagiginig ba kayo? Oo. I mean, we should be able to be corrective in our ministries. Lalo sa mga kabataan. Ang tahimik natin. Ha? It is time. Pero, ito, sabi ni Peter. Pasahin niyo. What shall the end? Ah, yeah. If it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? You know, the seriousness of the wrath of God sa unrighteous. Okay? And His rewards to the righteous. Malaking bagay yun, mga kapatid. Pero kung hindi, papanong magiging matingkad ang judgment sa unrighteous? Kung tayo hindi ang katingkaran natin sa katuwiran ay nagpapatingkad sa judgment ng Panginoon sa unrighteous. Did you know that? Kung ang righteousness na meron tayo ay mababaw, paanong mabibing, magiging mabigat? You know what I'm saying? Ha? Huh? These are opposite poles. Okay, let's, let's uh, go to the next. Medyo seven plus na. For when the time, he, I mean Hebrews 5, 12 to 14. So, it is time for us to be willing to be corrected in our churches. Hebrews 5, 12 to 14. 
I'm just completing this message entitled, It is Time, and I'm getting verses to show us what time it is. Okay? For when the time ye ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and so forth and so on. You can read that. But my point is this. It is time for us to act according to our maturity. It is time for us to lead according to our maturity. It is time for us to reflect the maturity in all things we do. Amen. Sa tagal naman ng... Eh, Gano katagal na ba tayo nagko-conference? Matagal na. Kaya alam niyo mga kapatid, nung umpisa pa lang, nung lunis pa lang, tinanong ko tayo ang lahat. Okay, conference na naman tayo. Ano na naman ang kahihinat na nito sa ating mga churches? Ano na naman ang ibubunga nito sa mga nag-attend? Magkano ginagastos ng Metropolitan para mag-conference? Magkano ginagastos nito? Ayun, 1.5 million. Okay? Matapos silang gumastos na ganyan, matapos silang kuma, magpakain, matapos gawin ang lahat ng ito, matapos i-involve ang lahat, para sa kanila may ikabubuti yun eh. Do you see that? Oh yes, definitely. Para sa kanila may ikabubuti yun. Pero sa ating mga nagpupunta rito, ano ang magre-resulta? Eh baka mamaya niyan. Pagbalik, pag alis natin dito, wala tayong kundi sabi, yabang naman ni Pastor Benny. Yun na lang palagi. Okay? Kaya alam nyo, itong ganitong mensahe na makita natin mismo, it is time for us to act according to our maturity. Ang maturity, mga kapatid, ay hindi lang sa puting buhok yan. Diba? Paano kung wala kang puting buhok, wala kang ng buhok, ano ang maturity mo? Diba? Eh kung doon natin ibabase, mga kapatid. At hindi ibig sabihin na porke ikay tumanda na sa ministry, mature ka na. Amen. Eh meron akong na, ano, nagmamalaki sa akin dahil napagraduate niya na yung elementary niyang anak. Akala mo, pag nagsalita, para bang nasa tugatog na siya ng tagumpay, napagraduate pa lang niya yung anak niya sa elementary. Sabi ko, kapatid, elementary pa lang yan. Matagal pa high school, matagal pa ang college. And for sure, yung anak mo, pag umabot ng high school, yan magbabago ugali niyan. May influensya niya ng ano. Lalo na pag kolehiyo, lalo na pag natapos siya ng kolehiyo, nagtrabaho yan. Hindi ka nasisig, huwag kang magmamalaki na tapos na tagumpay mo. Because ang maturity goes, iba-ibang level, mga kapatid. Amen? Oh yes, thank God for what's happening here, mga kapatid. Pero yun yun eh. Kaya alam nyo, somehow, we need to listen when people say, I've been there. I've been there. You see, nakapag-asawa ka, maganda asawa mo, tuwang-tuwa ka, ganyan. Hey, hindi pa kayo nagkakaanak. Hindi mo pa alam mong ugali ng asawa mo pag nanganak na. At may mga asawa na kapag nanganganak, nasisinto. <laughs> oh, di ba? Ang saya-saya mo eh, oh, di ba? Eh, paano pag meron ng ganyan? Come on. But it is time for us to rise up and live according to our maturity. Have understanding. Next. Hebrews 4.16 May time to. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of Okay, grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time in time of need it is time for us 
to know the right sources of our help. Alam niyo kagabi, sinasabi ko, kinekwento ko, huwag nating babastusin ang biyaya ng Panginoon. Sabi rin ni Paul yan, do not, do not, you know, use the grace of God in vain. At minsan, mga kapatid, winawalang bahala natin ang biyaya ng Panginoon. Simply, dahil ang katuwiran natin, grace is unmerited favor. Correct? But, let me ask, what establishes, what establishes in us our not being worthy of favor? What establishes? The Word. Without the Word, hindi natin maaaring ma-establish na tayo nga ay hindi worthy ng favor. Correct. Amen. Okay. Sabi ko kagabi, I use an example. Ito, medyo, you, you need to listen very carefully. Tayo naligtas ang ayon sa biyaya, correct? For by grace, are ye saved? Pero hindi tapos yun. Through faith. Amen. Many times, many times, we simply say, Oh, malaki ang biyaya ng Panginoon. Pero ang pananagutan natin sa salita ng Diyos, hindi natin tinitingnan. Faith is always consistency with the Word. Faith is first established so that grace may come in. The Bible also says, and Paul says, we have access into this grace by faith. Hello? Paano yan? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay? This is the written word of God. How did the written word of God come to us? The living word came and declared himself. And when he declared himself, his declaration was recorded and here is the written word. Amen. The written word speaks of the living word. Wala nang iba. And when the written word is appreciated, we see our unworthiness. And we follow and believe and we obey. And when this written word gets to us and we follow the written word, that's faith. And when faith is established as a highway, then the grace of God flows from God's throne to us and reaches us and gets, him, gets us to Him. That is how it works. Observe it. Kaya huwag na huwag tayo na magmamalaki ng biyaya ng Panginoon however unworthy we are kung wala tayong consistency sa salita ng Diyos. And this is the truth here. When we get to be consistent with the Word of God, grace and grace and marvelous grace and amazing grace and abundant grace will flow definitely. Yeah. We do not just pray, Lord, be gracious to us and leave this word behind. Because grace and grace and marvelous grace will flow. But we need to be consistent with the word. That is how it is applied. So we need to learn how grace comes to us. It is time. Alam nyo, akala, yung mga evangelical, mga Pentecostal. No, let us pray for the Philippines. Let us pray, 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 pray. Wala man lang salita ng Diyos. Eh paano magiging totoo na ang Panginoon ay tutugon? Wala naman tayo. We pray amiss without the Word of God. So learn, learn these things. Next, Hebrews 2.1. Nakakapagod mag-preach mga kapatid. Hebrews 2.1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Lest at any time, at any time, we should let them slip. It is time to hold fast. Because at any time, we don't want to let these things slip. It is time to take hold of things that we have. And there's a lot of verses that you know about holding fast. Amen. 
hold fast to these things. I have two more. Ephesians 5.16. I don't need to elucidate on that. Ephesians 5.16 says, Redeeming the time because the days are evil. I was talking to a big manager and he came to me and he said, Bishop, how do you do it? You are in what? Ten organizations outside your church and you are, how do you do it? How? So I said, uh, that I follow a principle. I follow a principle ng stewardship. Sabi ko, lahat tayo, lahat tayo ay humaharap sa tatlong bagay. Lahat ng tao, kahit mga churches, humaharap tayo sa tatlong bagay. At lahat ng hinaharap natin, you can actually categorize into three. Ano yung tatlo? One, responsibility. Two, opportunity. Three, problem. Tama? Tatlong bagay lang. Doon mo lang titingnan o i-categorize mo. Anong hinaharap mo ngayon? Anong kinakailangan mong harapin? Anong paglalaanan mo ng panahon? Anong paglalaanan mo ng pera? Anong paglalaanan mo ng ganito? What, do you, what, what will you be addressing? Tatlong bagay lang. Responsibility, opportunity, problem. Amen? Amen. O, tanahin ko kayo. Sample. Anak. Ano yun? Hindi niyo malaman ngayon kung anong anak niyo. Kung responsibility, kung opportunity o problem. Halimbawa, trabaho. Ano yun? Oh, you need to learn how to categorize that. And then you need to learn how to categorize your resources. What resources do we have? Number one, time. Number two, wealth. Number three, strength. Number four, abilities and skills. So what of the four do you need to address any of the three? Ganun lang yun. Now, ang pinaka-basic sa apat ay isa lang. Kasi, pag ang pinag-usapan natin wealth, hindi tayo pantay-pantay ng wealth. Correct? Pag ang pinag-usapan, lakas. Hindi tayo pantay-pantay ng lakas. Pangatlo, abilities. Hindi rin tayo pantay-pantay ng abilities. Isa lang ang meron tayong pantay-pantay. Ano? Sigurado kayo, time? Ha? Huh? Yes, correct? Everybody has equal time, correct? However young or old you are, meron ka rin equal time. 25 hours. Ay, salamat nagikinig kayo. 24 hours. Isa lang ang 25 hours, yung guda. Okay. 24 hours, lahat tayo. Alam niyo ba, very basic ito. If you do not know how to steward your time, you fail in everything. Bakit? Yun ang binigay ng Panginoon sa atin para maging basic sa lahat. Yan ang sukatan ko. Kaya ang tao na walang patumangga at walang kahal- pagpapahalaga sa oras, wala rin niyang pagpapahalaga sa all other resources. Tandaan yan. Hello? Totoo yan. Because that is the most basic of all commodities and resources we have. Kaya batang bata pa lang, dapat tinuturo na how to value time. To redeem the time. Eh pero teka muna mga kapatid. Alas 9 yung service natin, alas 10 na wala pa rin. Tama? Tapos ang angal, matagal yung, matagal yung preaching. Hindi naman yun ang problema eh. Kami, natuto kami. Kasi alam nyo, sa, ngayon sa Lighthouse, from 11 to 12 in the morning ng, ng Sunday, live na sa television ang aming service. Live on television. Kaya walang error dapat. 
Walang waste time. And I have been emphasizing that. This is a training for us. Let us be disciplined right on the dot. Pag 11.03, pa! Transfer. Nasa TV kami. Eh kung nakatunga nga kami. Wala. Ano ba yan? Natuto na ako em punto. Alas 12. Hindi lang dito kasi syempre. Okay. Well anyway. But, within the time. Value the opportunities. Gawin natin ito, mga kapatid. In all respects, do you remember the parable of the ten, ten virgins? But virgins ang ginamit ng Panginoon? Virgins na in doon sa Matthew chapter 25 yata yun, is actually a parable typifying churches. Because, listen, of all entities that value time and that redeem time, they should be the churches. Lastly, Amen. Romans 13, 11. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Simply lang ang aking last point. My last point is this. Very, very important. It is time for us to know the time. Amen. It is time for us to know the time. Amen. Eh, kung wala kang anos oras, kulelat ka kapatid. It's about time. God bless you.